All right, what's up everyone? Here today to bring you this month's, or lots of months, because I haven't been on in a while, um, game update pickup video. Um, since I haven't been on, you, you know, I, I hope y'all had a great Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's Day and whatever holiday you want. Also, hope you're staying safe with the coronavirus and all that, and because everyone's freaking the fuck out, you know, how that's going. Um, I'm staying safe, um, except for, you know, this. Ended up cutting myself last night on a milk jug that shattered all over my uh, countertop. Awesome. Didn't need stitches, but the guy had to cut it open more just to look for glass, so that was fun. You know. Woo! <laughs> so if I'm fumbling with trying to grab shit, it's, um, yeah, because of this. But it does give me an excuse I could flick people off. <laughs> so, I don't know where the hell that came from. That was like a Peter Griffin laugh. <laughs> anyway, gonna dive right into the juiciness of this. And I apologize if this is gonna be like a super long video. I haven't done a game update video in like five months. So this is like a whole bunch of shit that has accumulated. And there's... A lot of it. So, <laughs> here we go. Alright, I'm going to try to hold this camera with this finger, this, or this hand. This is going to be good. Alright, so starting off for the Nintendo 64, I got me a copy of... It's a uh, reproduction cart of Super Smash Bros. Remix. I had a spare manual, so I just threw it in there with it. Now, I this is probably one of my favorite reproduction cards that I have. Um, my current fa favorite is definitely my golden Goldfinger one, but this one is definitely a close second. Um, I redid the artwork because now this game has like 20 something stages. You can play as Young Link, Falco, Dr. Mario, and Ganondorf. And for me personally, this was my favorite Smash Bros. And my favorite characters are Pikachu and Ganondorf. So now, finally being able to play Ganondorf in the original game, on Ganon's tower, mind you, is just mind-blown. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Although I am a little bit upset because I bought this, and I guess they're still updating it. And now you can play as Dark Samus. So I'm like, well, well shit, because I don't know how to update. I can't update this stuff. <laughs> I don't have the tools. So that's the only thing I'm bummed out about. But other than that, um, I, uh, I love it. Um, if you like this artwork, I have a link to, I'll have a link to my DeviantArt page down below, and that has, um, where I uploaded that, and you can download it from there. Alright, so next up, also for the 64, is not really a rare game per se, but, you know, you don't see it out in the wild too much, and especially this, and it makes, this makes it super rare, and that is... Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, complete with the box. All right. I'm so happy. So let's dive right into this. All right, so here we got the manual, which I also got recently got these sleeves to put the manuals in. I've done that for all my box games and pretty much any game that has a manual. As you saw, Smash Bros had it and now this. And then here's the box. And then the game itself. So yeah, like I said, the game itself is definitely not on the rare side. I think it's like 50 bucks. So, I mean, it's a little little more expensive than some of the games, but it's, you know, it's manageable. But what makes this rare is the box and manual itself. Those, I, I came across it and I couldn't pass it up. I, I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. And when I saw the opportunity to pick this up, I, I pretty much didn't hesitate. So, and, and I, I enjoy the game. I have the game unboxed, but I just wanted to get a, uh, a boxed copy of that. So, yeah, that's, that's that one. Really, really excited to have that in my collection. So, yeah, like I said, it's a little more pricey with the box. I paid, a uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But, um, I think, or maybe it was 150 But, yeah, so I, I, I couldn't pass that up. Now, this next one, it's the same kind of circumstance with with indie but it, it's a it's a game that is is it's bad it's it's bad but for me it's one of my guilty pleasure games again it's a game you can find loose for probably about 50 bucks or something like that at least that's what i've seen it out there and that's what i nabbed up my unbox copy for 
but with the box, now this one I paid several hundred dollars for, I, yeah, it's like the same boat as Indy. I don't know if any, what kind of exclusive that was, what makes the box so hard to find, but this one was a Blockbuster exclusive. So trying to find, you know, the box demand and all that is definitely tough to find. It's like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, just definitely probably about half the price of that, really. But it's like in the same boat trying to find it. And again, the opportunity came. This is one of my guilty pleasure games, along with Van Helsing and a couple other ones. But I, I, I spent countless hours renting this out at Blockbuster and playing it when I was a kid. So opportunity came and there it is. So uh, we'll dive right into this. So yeah, as you can see, we got the game here. And we got the manual. And then the box itself. So yeah, like this, this was a definitely a, a big blow to my wallet. But hey, you know what? What? Whatever. <laughs> so there's a Blockbuster sticker. We have 400, 282, which matches the sticker on here. 400, 282. Woo! So I thought that was pretty cool. Kind of authenticates everything. But yeah, this one was... Definitely, definitely um, expensive. And if you're looking to go for a complete set, but you don't care if you have the box and whatnot, get this one unboxed. It'll save your wallet. And like I said, it's not the best game in the freaking world. Just, I enjoyed it and I couldn't resist one. I had the opportunity. Yay! All right, so that is that one. Transformer Beast Meadow. Alright, so for um, blah, 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 Sega Genesis, grab me a copy of TMNT Hyperstone Heist. Got that bad boy in there with this manual. I actually got this transferred in at the game store that I used to work at um, from a store out in Pennsylvania. And um, it's nice, it's crisp. Wh whoever owned this before definitely. Uh, they definitely knew how to take care of their stuff, and I thank them for that. Alright, so for 32X, I grabbed Motocross Championship. And also Cosmic Carnage. I got these at the same store. It was uh, one of our stores probably about an hour away from me. I was visiting my best friend, and she's got one that's over by her house. So when I left there, I kind of hit that store up. And they had a couple 32X games, but these were the two that kind of caught my eye because I kind of like dirt biking stuff. Like, what is it, ATV Off-Road Fury and like Moto Racer for the PS1. So that caught my eye. And then this is just like a fighting game with like, I think it's like giant robots or something or aliens. Either way, it just, they were just two things that caught my eye. So I was like, hell yeah. That and I also don't have a lot of 32X games, so I'm kind of building up a library. I have now, let's see, two, four. That makes six games for my 32X. Woo! <laughs> All right, so for PS1, I picked up the whole Cool Border series. So we got 2001, we got four, three, two, one, boom, yes. I actually got these from a mom and pop shop. That's about an hour west of where I live and I do like going to it and the only thing that sucks though is that it's an hour away and I don't usually get out there that often at least with the store by my best friend's house you know I'm out there to see my best friend so it's like you know but um what was cool is that I got all these there because I was looking to pick these up ever since I played the second one on my PlayStation Classic but um I wanted to pick them all up at once. I don't know why. And all the stores I'd go to, they'd have this one and this one, or this one and that one, or this one and this one, but they wouldn't have them all. This store had them all. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna grab them all. And then while I was at that mom and pop shop, they also had this little Crash Bandicoot Lego. Although it's not really Lego, they're off brand and they're super tiny, like ridiculously tiny. And the directions on him were not very clear at all. So this little guy that's probably, he's as big as a jewel case. This little guy took me like three hours to put together. The instructions suck. So if he ever breaks, I'm just going to walk away. I'm done. I'm not 
putting him back together. <laughs> I just thought he was cool because he was crash. And then also while I was there, I managed to talk to the owner's son and his dad, his private collection that he has duplicates of, he's willing to, you know, you have to pay cash for it, but he's willing to sell you some stuff. So I was looking for, I'd eventually like to get manuals for all my non-box games, but I wanted to focus on my 64 stuff. Obviously the repro cards like Dragon Sword and 40 Winks aren't going to have manuals, but all my other ones will. So I was focusing in on that and his dad had like every... Almost my entire library, which made me happy. I picked up a uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day manual. Uh, he had Doom 64. Uh, what else did he have? What was another hard one to find that he had? I think he had, yeah, he had Hey You Pikachu. He had Mystical Nin... No, not Mystical Nin... He had Goemon. That's what he had. No, wait. I thought he had one of those. Oh, no, yeah, it's Mystical Ninja. There it is. Hiding right in there. Kind of. And then he had Raymond, he had Rampage, he had, what else did he have? Um, he had Snowboard Kids 2, no, he had Snowboard Kids 1, which I guess is like a super hard one to get a hold of. So that one definitely costed a pretty penny for sure. And he also, what else did he have? Oh, he had Truck 3 I needed, he had Truck Rage Wars. That one I put it in. I still need to get one for this copy, but you know, I only got one copy and I surprisingly didn't have them for my Zeldas. I had them for my box copies, but not my unbox, but I only got one of each. So, cause I got different versions, collector's editions, uh, not for resales, master quests. So I just got one, one for each, make it easy. All right. So that was definitely a fun, a fun, fun trip. Okay, so that's those. All right, and then for GameCube here, I picked up a copy of this game called Tube Slider. Weird ass name, but it's kind of like F-Zero X, you know, super fast racing through tubes. But still, it's, if you like F-Zero X, this is definitely gonna be, definitely gonna be a good one. And I wanted, and, I, I just, it just looked interesting to me, so I grabbed it. It's a little more on the pricey side, that's why I kind of have it in this little baggie to kind of protect it. I mean, by pricey, I say like, you know, I think I paid 80 bucks for it and whatnot, but if it goes up, because it's one I usually don't see in my game store, so that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna keep it safe. All right, also grabbed Geist, which that looked pretty interesting. And then got, Japanese copy of Twilight Princess. Now this one, apparently they um, didn't release as many copies, shocker, just like they didn't over here in America because they're trying to promote the Wii. And so I guess this though, they only released it online, which makes this version a little bit harder to find than all the others. And again, it was one of those moments that the moment arised and I pounced on it. And this is my second favorite Zelda game. So I was like, why not? I love, 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 love this game. I'm actually playing through it again right now on my GPD win while I'm at work. So that's fun. Um, for PS2, I got Crash Tag Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart. Um, I've been playing a lot of, although now I kind of burned myself out on it, but I've been playing a lot of CTR Nitro Fueled. And a lot of the maps from, I don't know if a lot of them or all of them from this game are on there. And I really, really, really enjoyed the, the maps. So I was just like, you know what? Why haven't I picked up Tag Team Racing and Nitro Kart? So I did that. Also for PS2, I have a PAL import coming. Because I recently discovered they had Jackie Chan Adventures on iTunes. So I've been currently binge watching that because I loved that show as a kid. And I found out that the PAL region has an has a, I almost said Indiana Jones, has a, uh, a Jackie Chan Adventures video game. Granted, now I can't play it on my system here, so I bought it just to have for the collection, and I actually downloaded the ISO so I could start playing it on my computer, because then I don't feel as guilty, and I also just really wanted it for the collection. So, um, I ordered that, like, a week and a half ago, but I'm just sharing it now, because the way the coronavirus is, I 
probably won't be seeing it for a little while, the way they're re restricting all... everything. So, but uh, that is coming, so that will be on the next video whenever I decide to do the next video and whenever I receive it. Okay, so, um, for we picked up Pirate's Plunder, which is kind of like a, um, a Castle Crashers four-player beat-em-up. So, I, I really, I love Castle Crashers, so I wanted to grab that. And then I got Donkey Kong Tropical... Oh, wait. That was Wii. Ah, now I'm on Wii U. Ah. Um, got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And I got New Super Mario Bros. U. Both of these games I already have digitally on my system. It was when the Nintendo Points was closing, so I grabbed every single game I owned. I typed in the code, and then it was like, Hey, you have this many points. Would you like to spend them and get a game? So I picked those two games, but I decided to get them physically. That way then, you know, if in case anything should happen, God forbid, and I can't play them, I can still play them because, yeah, I like my physical media. All right, so next here for the Wii U, I got the remake of Legend of K. I actually have two of them, and I'm keeping this one in another little baggie because it is sealed, so I, I doubt it'll become anything, but hey, you never know. So the story behind this was, is that I ordered this, and ordered this online, and the way it was looking, I thought it got lost in the mail. So that kind of pissed me off and whatnot. And then I found out the store that's an hour away from me, east, not the mom and pop shop, but one of our, our, uh, our uh, other locations for the store that I used to work at, had this. So ran out, got this. Two days later, this shows up at my door. And I'm like, okay. So, um, the one I got online is still sealed, so I just put it in this wrap just to kind of protect it from when if it slides in and out of my shelving over there. So, um, yeah, so now I have two copies of it. Granted, I could go trade one back in and get some money back or return it or something, but that's just not my nature. I don't know why. So, it is what it is. So I have two copies of that now. All right, and then also for Wii U, I picked up Devil's Third. Now again, another plastic sleeve. This is because this is another one. It, it was a couple hundred bucks. Um, it's like a third person uh, cover-based action shooter slasher from what I saw online, and it looked pretty fun. So I wanted to give it a try. It, like I said, it is a little more on the expensive side, but, you know, I wanted to try it, wanted to get it, and, you know, it's kind of kind of interesting to have a kind of rare game on the Wii U, because you wouldn't think that the Wii U would have something like that. But, I don't know. Just wanted to give it a shot. Alright, so for 360, picked up Sonic Unleashed. I have been eyeballing this game for a while. I like Sonic, and it's like a Sonic werewolf, were-hedgehog tale, and I love werewolves, so I was just like, why did I put this off for so long? So I grabbed it. I also did see the Sonic movie, and I saw that opening weekend, and I loved it. I was unsure how I was going to feel about it, but I have to admit, you know, they're, they they did a pretty damn good job. I mean, maybe maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope, because Detective Pikachu, and now this. But then I hear news about Uncharted, and I just get sad, so there's no hope. <laughs> so, um, so for the Switch... Picked up a copy of Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. I honestly thought that this was just like some challenge that everyone was doing because I would see it on Twitch and they're like, so-and-so is doing Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. I just assumed they were playing the original Ukulele and the Impossible Lair was a challenge that they were trying to complete or something. And I liked uh, Ukulele, so once I found out that it wasn't a challenge, that it's an actual different platforming game, I went, ooh, I must own this. So, own it. I have. <laughs> also picked up Okami HD. This is actually a Japanese import for the Switch, which was at my game store. And it was brand new, still sealed and everything, with their stickers on it, so they imported it somehow. Um, this was before the whole coronavirus thing, so no worries, hopefully. Maybe I should set it down. Keep away. <laughs> no, it's okay. But, um, so this, 
I guess was released digitally over here and then physically over in Japan. And so me and my physical media, I had to get it. It's kind of like, reminds me of a Ratchet and Clank on the PS Vita. I got the physical one of that because they didn't release it over here. And then while I was at it, I picked up new Super Mario U Deluxe and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. So did I need to pick them up on the Wii U? No. But I did anyway. Why? Because I'm that weird kind of collector. I just, I, I don't know. I can't describe it. I wanted them on both systems, so bleh. And then I got Luigi's Mansion 3. And then picked up Disney's Aladdin and Lion King combo, which is amazing. I loved playing those games on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo as a kid, so to have them again is nice. And then Limited Run, which I don't know how rare that'll be, but that's why that this one's in plastic. Um, Limited Run, I finally, I, I think I'd mentioned it in my last video, like forever ago. Uh, they finally sent my Turok uh, and Turok 2 carts. Each game is on a separate cart, which is nice, so it's got its own artwork in this little sleeve. Um, so yeah, they finally sent it, and I was actually surprised at how quick this came. They said, hey, it's gonna ship in December, and I'm like, okay, so that means I'm not gonna get it until, like, February. No, they shipped it in December, and I got it before the New Year, so I was, I was super stoked about that. And then it came with its little holographic cards that they do. And then also limited run at around the same time, finally got my Jack X combat racing. They took forever on this. Like not to so much send it, but to um, like between Jack three and this, like Jack one, Precursor Legacy came out and then Jack two wasn't long after and then Jack three. And then they kind of just took a break from this for like ever. And I was like, are they ever gonna release Jack X like they said they would? And then they finally did. So it was like, yay. And then it came pretty quickly, which made me happy. And then there's the card for that. So for Xbox One, picked up Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I 100% this game. Got all of the achievements, everything. I, I, I loved this game. And if you're a big Star Wars fan, I highly recommend picking it up because it's just freaking fantastic. And there was a lot of glitches in this, but nothing too game breaking that made me like upset. I actually have a video of the glitches that happened and I actually found them to be quite enjoyable and I would laugh at it so I would record them and then I made a little collage of them and whatnot in a video but um yeah so I mean that says a lot when a game is glitchy and you can still enjoy it for what it is like it was it was fantastic I I, I loved every single minute of playing that game <laughs> sorry there's something on my screen um but yeah that was good so then also picked up the Spyro Trilogy, I picked this up again. So one of these is the copy that I, because I've been playing this, I finally beat the third one. I stopped for a while after beating the first two. But one of these, so I heard that they secretly re-released these. And as you can see, nothing is different on their, on their cover art. And if you go in the discs though, so here is, I can just tell from the color, here is my copy, and here it says, copyright 2018. Well, this one here says copyright 2018, 2019. So now supposedly this version has all three games on the disc, whereas this one only had the first one and you had to download the other two via update. So, and it even says different stuff here. Like this here, it says some levels require download, internet connection required. Requires content download, internet connection required. So they worded it a bit differently too. So I, I just thought if that's true, I'm just gonna, I I'd like to get this copy that way in case something happens to my Xbox, I can still play the games and whatnot. So, and then looking at my copies, you can even tell there's a difference. Like this looks so much more saturated. And this is my first copy. And both of these are brand new, mind you. This one was GameStop, so they were able to look at the disc and confirm, and then I bought it. This one I bought right when it came out. But, like, look how saturated that looks. And even, like, the Microsoft logo and the Do Not Make Illegal Copies and this, all that just looks off compared to this. So I don't know, like, I don't know. It still works and everything, and I got it brand new, like I said. But it just kind of, after looking at that copy, I'm like... 
Did I get like a bootleg or something? So, I don't know. Weird shit. Alright, and then finally for PC, I picked up a copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic. Because I love Roller Coaster Tycoon, and right now, I have to run them through a Windows XP, I think, emulator, and I have to, like, make sure that, you know, the administrator lets it play. So I was like, how long before this won't work anymore? So I just picked up this copy. It's the first two games remastered. Includes the expansions. Woohoo! And it works for Windows 7 and up. So I was like, alright, so if my old copies decide not to work anymore, I have those. Okay, so, moving on in. I'm trying to get my... Oh, that's why. can't roll in because the thing's in the way. Alright, so, moving on to miscellaneous figure. I got this little stitch. When I was down with my best friend, we went to this little book shop. Kind of like a Barnes & Noble, but it's not a Barnes & Noble. And they had all these little... They had so much stitch stuff. Like, I went insane. And they had one last package of these mystery figures and they were all stitch stuff inside but I wanted this one and when I opened up the mystery package I was so happy that this is the one I got like the other ones were cool but I just like his face how he's just like blah, 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 blah. so and yeah which reminds me have y'all seen Kaz Vanderpool's re uh Lilo and Stitch recap oh my god it's fucking fantastic with his stitch I'm lost lost Smeagol. Like, it's, it's a, oh my god, it's, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, anyway, and you already seen the Lego Man, which lets move you out of the way so nothing falls on you and breaks. Because if that happens, Ashley's gonna cry. Yes, there we go. Alright, so Amiibos. Picked up, I can't maneuver with this finger. There we go. Picked up a Wind Waker with his uh, uh, Zelda Wind Waker with his little baton. This one I believe was part of the set with him and Zelda. They only had him there and he, he was a little, little pricey, but I picked him up anyway because I was like, I love Link, so why not? Also managed to grab Breath of the Wild Link with the bow and arrow. Doing the slow time jump. And then I went up to Best Buy one day and they had Dark Samus I didn't even know that Dark Samus was coming out as an amiibo. And I just thought it looked so badass that I had to pick it up. Like, I love the whole combo of the blue, the black, and the purple. It just looks... It just looks sweet. I love it. Alright, and then I managed to get this lovely Wolverine Samurai figure from GameStop. When I went in there to get the Spyro. So, I just thought it looked too badass to pass up. I'm a big Wolverine fan, so needed that in my life. And speaking of Wolverine, at work we've been messing with our flatbed printer. And our guy got some jigs cut out in the shape of Ohio. And he test printed one of the pictures I had uploaded on our server. I think I printed this on a banner or something, like when I first started there. So, the one guy used this as a sample. And he put white vinyl on the back and these little sticky things so now we have ohio state wolverine i know isn't that so bad michigan wolverine ohio state yeah um but ohio state wolverine coasters and i he, he gave them to me because i because he tested it out he knows how much i love wolverine and I, I live in ohio so yeah that's why we did that all right so moving on to Pop figures, my addiction. Oh, there's like a whole mountain here. All right, so here we go. So, first one here is let's grab you. I got Spyro. Amy, so precious. So cute. Got Venomized Rocket. I love Venom and I love Rocket, so I was like, ooh, must have. I got this really cool. I think it's 80th anniversary, Wolverine. I kept his box just in case if he becomes valuable sometime. Um, and if he does, I'll stick him back in the box very gently. Because right now, you know, I've, I've been being really careful with him. So, yeah. 
Uh, then I got, I finally found, I've been looking for him because I have all the other Crash ones. Well, I don't have the one where he's spinning because I think I've seen that one and it just looks silly to me. But, you know, I've got him in his biker outfit. I've got him in his scuba gear without a scuba gear. I got fake Crash. I was looking for a jetpack Crash forever. Finally found him when I went down to that, um, the store down by my, be by my best friend. And now I know why I couldn't find him, because apparently this was a Toys R Us exclusive, and Toys R Us closed. So, you know, I was never going to easily find him. But I'm so happy I did, and now he's a part of the collection. Woo! Also got Tiny Tiger. I love Tiny. It's awesome. And then I picked up the Pokemon Pops that they've been doing. So... I got Squirtle. Squirtle, Squirtle. Oh, I was kind of going into Stitch voice there. Squirtle, Squirtle. And then we got Bulbasaur. Bulba. Got Charmander. Charmander, Char! Like, come on. The first time you meet Charmander in the series, like, that is like the saddest fucking episode. Like, animal abuse right there. I'm so glad that he abandons him to go with Ash. Which, I never understood why he turns into such a dick when he becomes Charizard. Like... He saved you, man. I don't know. And finally, last but not least, we got Pika Pika. Although, I, I, I don't know why, with that whole new slimmed down look they're going for Pikachu, like, is it just me, or does his head look abnormally big for his body? Like, the others, it doesn't look so bad. But Pikachu, something is not right with the ratio here. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then finally, after I ordered him forever ago... On the James Bond website, pre-ordered them, my James Bond Series 2 came, and I'm so stoked about that. So, here we have, we got Baron Samiti, which terrified me as a child in Goldeneye with that evil laugh of his. I've got Le Chief, Honey Rider, with her little seashell. She does not like to stand up. She falls over and knocks them all over, which makes me kind of sad, but whatever. And then we got Money Penny, and her hair weighs a ton. So when Honey falls over and knocks her over, she just dominoes and takes out, it's like a bowling ball, just takes out everybody like the pins. All right, then we got M. And then we got my favorite man, Pierce Brosnan Goldeneye. Woo! And then we got Daniel Craig in Quantum of Solace. Daniel Craig from Casino, either Skyfall or Casino Royale. I want to say Casino Royale, but it could be Skyfall. And then we got Daniel Craig from Spectre. Now this one, I also kept the box for just in case if it becomes valuable, because this one here is a James Bond online store exclusive. And I don't know how many people know that, and I don't know how many they're going to sell. So that's why I'm like... Ooh, this might be a valuable one one day. So kind of like the Wolverine, I'm kind of, you know, keeping him, trying to keep him nice. And that way then if I could put him back in the box and whatnot. Which, speaking of which, I'm so bummed. Like, I know it's for everybody's safety, but now I gotta wait like eight months for No Time to Die. Which... I have to admit, Billie Eilish did a do. She did an amazing job on the song. I, I was skeptical, skeptical at first, and I apologize for that. I need to update my video that says, you know, the one with the uh, poets of the fall that says I'm not sure she's going to be a good Bond fit. I have to update that and say I was wrong. Girl, you bla you, you did a great job on that song, and now I'm going to be listening to that song on repeat until November because it was supposed to come out next month, and now it's not. Thank you, coronavirus. For ruining everything. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway. Alright. So, getting down to the nitty gritty. So, I'm too lazy to have it set up and pulled out. So my Xbox, my modded Xbox, which is that one there. That one's not. Originally modded it because the disk drive was dead and whatnot. So I decided to do some little more research and learn how to update the hard drive. Turns out to do that you need a working disk drive to burn the stuff to the disk to do the hot swap, which technical people know what that is and if you don't I don't feel like explaining it. Anyway, so I went up to the game store, I bought a used Xbox that apparently had been refurbished and they usually don't take those in so it's kind of good I grabbed it. 
and I swapped out the disk drives in that Xbox, swapped out the hard drives. Now that boy, bad boy is running a 120 gigabyte hard drive and I can play more than just the two games that I put on there. Like my entire PS1 library is on it. Um, my entire Nintendo 64, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis is all on that hard drive and it's fantastic. I'll have a little video that I sent to my brother of me playing Star Fox on it and being all excited and being like, look what I did! So I'm just happy that I took apart the system and I didn't fuck it up and the reason I also went inside there is because the I found out my good Xbox is version 1.6 so it doesn't have the clock capacitor that's gonna ooze out and die and kill everything which makes me happy so I don't have to take that apart but that one was like a 1.4 I think or something like that so I had to take out and I ended up I ended up pulling out the uh, the battery and it already had exploded so there was some acid in there I cleaned it all up it still works and whatnot I'm just happy that I was able to take it apart, do all that, put it back together, put a new hard drive and disk drive in, and it all works beautifully. So, yay, round of applause for me. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. Um, my best friend for Christmas got me a Roku box. So, and she's letting me use her Netflix and Amazon and all that fun jazz. So thank you so much for that, girl. I've been watching, uh, the new Invader Zim movie and Rocco's Modern Life on there, so that's been really good. And sometimes it is just nice to plop down on the couch and turn it on and whatnot, and I could just pick a movie. Although, don't get me wrong, I still love my physical collection. Gotta love that. Why is Snoopy there? I, I come down here every day and I just now realize he's like right there. I think we're getting rid of him. And I don't want to get rid of him. My mom always wants to get rid of him every year, but I find him too cute that I, I just can't. But anyway, this isn't a Christmas video, so... On, onward. So, next, over here, let me turn on the light, I got a 8 terabyte hard drive for my PC, because I was running out of space on my PC, and this thing's a terabyte, and even my brother was like, how did you go through so much? And I'm like, I do video editing, and I do Photoshop shit. And so I ended up buying an 8, eight terabyte hard drive, which I don't even have hooked up yet because I found out how to clear my cache in my Adobe programs. And since I did that, it freed up like 300 gigs. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm good until, uh, yeah, you know, but at least I, I have a backup. I'm prepared. I'm ready. So, you know, yeah. All right. So last but not least, I hope that the video quality and the audio quality have been great because I also got a new phone. I am now on Windows, or Windows, wow. I'm doing real good, aren't I? I'm on the iPhone X, or 10, whatever you wanna call it. And I was on an iPhone 5 for the longest time. And so it's nice to finally be on a new phone and I got a clear case that I printed the back of the, on the back I printed. You'll see it here. Where's the light? You know me, I don't want to show my face. I'm the invisible woman. So, I don't know if y'all can see, but I'll have a picture of it floating somewhere on your screen right now. It's a um, clear case and that I stuck on our big printer at work and I printed Wolverine silhouette on the back so it's like red and black coming out. And the puppy's here. <gasps> Hi, you made an appearance. He's like, I'm sleepy, I'm stretching. Yeah. He's been liking to lick my finger. I think he smells either the uh, medicine on it or he smells the blood and he just likes to go to town. But you can't do that. You can't do that because that's not good. Oh, you're shocking. Hmm. Want to say hi to the people? Nope, he, he's going to go. Yep, he's doing exactly what I just said he would. No. <laughs> you are such a little gooby. So that is the game update. I think I got everything in there. And again, I apologize for this being like a forever long video, but I haven't been on in a while. Did you miss the people, my? Wanna say hi? Wanna say hi? It's like, 
bitch, what are you doing? He's my favorite little boy. Him and him and our kitty. Yeah. But you're my favorite out of the two. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you all for watching. I hope y'all stay safe. Practice good hygiene and don't 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 freak the fuck out too much, people. Because it, it, I mean it's bad, but just just be safe. That's all you gotta do. Take precautions and all that fun stuff. And we will get through this. Right, Mai? It's like, I'm gonna go to sleep next to you now. <laughs> Alright, so you guys take care of yourself. And I will see you next time. Bye! Say bye-bye, Mai! Was he bye bye Bye-byes. <laughs> okay, so after uh, coming back in here and tidying, starting to tidy up, I realized I forgot three things. First, this awesome Jack and Daxter poster, which I picked up at the game store that I used to work at. It's not often I see Jack and Daxter memorabilia and stuff. I don't know why. It just gets no love. But I, I love Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. It's my favorite PS2 game and my favorite one in the series. So whenever I can see anything Jack and Daxter related, I, I nab that up. So I grabbed that. Also, for... I also modded... No, not the Xbox. Right here, hiding, tucked away next to my Sega Genesis, is my Sega Genesis Mini. And that I finally modded since they finally got the mod scene up and running. Woo! Good job, guys. Um, and so I added my entire Sega Genesis library, my 32X library, and my Sega CD library. So now all that's on there. I could add more, but I just want... It's a Genesis. If I want to play Nintendo, I'll hook up my Nintendo. And then I had it sitting right here. Right here. Y'all saw it. But um, I just completely forgot about it. So also grabbed the... Um, the uh, uh, Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. So right now I have it kind of disassembled because I don't like it pressing on my stuff. But um, I, I, I really I really love this controller. I love that the triggers now have like a third pressure setting. The settings are more in-depth. You got three profiles instead of two, which I actually... I actually use all three. I have my main one that I would play for Gears of Wars 4 and 5. I have a setup now for when I play Gears of Wars um, 1, 2, and 3 because I'm so used to the L. They don't have tournament settings in the older Gears, so I'm so used to using the left bumper as my rolling and wall bouncing, so I have it now set up for that. And I even have a setting where I was kind of testing out Gears 5 with using one hand as a joystick and the other hand as a mouse, so all my buttons are mostly mapped to the left side of my controller. It, you know, it it, it kind of works, but I was sucking at it. But anyway, regardless, this thing was really, really cool. It took me forever to freaking find it. I had to actually drive like a half hour or so to a Walmart that finally had it because everywhere I went, they were sold out of them. So it was just like trying to find the first one all over again. Um, it's got a built-in battery now. And um, you can charge that it came with a it actually has a different that's the only thing I do I, I will I will say that I don't like about it is that it actually has a different charging port. So it comes with the the charger, so that's no biggie. But um when I'm not playing gears, I usually just use my my uh regular controller, my quantum brake controller there. And so it was nice that I would pop in the batteries, switch them out, and plug in if I needed to use my charger. I would just leave, you know, I just leave my charger plugged in and I could switch from that to this, no problem. Now I have to unplug the charger, plug in this charger if this battery dies. So that's my only, uh, my only complaint. Um, the back paddles are definitely smaller than before, which took a little bit getting used to, but it's, you know, I've gotten used to it now. Um, there's some slight stick drift on the right joystick. I've noticed if I'm holding it like this, my guy's going like that. And then as soon as I stop, it stops. But, you know, I, I, I played 
my 360, I wore out my Years of War controller to the point where it just, you, you, you blow like a little, and the thing just like, is like, woo! So, and I still use that controller. So this is so minor, it doesn't bug me. So, I can't believe I forgot about that. I guess, you know, black box being on a black sofa, you know, just kind of camouflaged itself. But anyway, so that is the game update video. Um... Again, I know I've already said it before, but again, as always, thank you all for watching. And, you know, just stay safe. We'll get through this together. And, yeah, be, be safe out there, guys. Thanks for watching.